Hello, my name is Marco, and I am doing a video on candles. Uh, medieval candles. And lamps. And I was doing some research, and uh, this is partially, partially entertainment, partially uh, for my book. I was curious about different types of candles and lamps. You know, lamps, the oil lamps, olive oil lamps, if you can see that, lamps. Um, there, bring my, try not to spill this oil here, olive oil lamp, a little tiny thing, and uh, there's basically, according to my, to my research, there's basically two types of candles. Uh, one was the expensive beeswax candle. And uh, most candles nowadays, the cheaper candles are made out of paraffin wax and that is the petroleum product. Gross. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But they're cheap. And... But today we got something special. We got something special to share. This is a beeswax candle. It is beautiful. You can just tell right now just the difference in light. Pleasant fragrance, beeswax candle. Uh, but it was, you know, naturally harder to get, more expensive. Now, during my research, I was intrigued. I was intrigued by this. This is a lamp. This is a little oil lamp. Uh, they found uh, lamps uh, uh, in Britain during the uh, Roman occupation expansion. And uh, I kind of wondered, well, why isn't there oil lamps mentioned as much as candles? Maybe it's just a Hollywood thing. The candles are, look nicer. I don't know. But then I thought, well, olive oil, olives, olives, olive oil is from the Mediterranean, Italy. And naturally, the Romans were probably very fond of it. Uh, cool thing about olive oil is that uh, you can uh, it lasts a lot longer and uh, it lasts a lot longer however the uh, Another cool thing about this is that you can modify the wick to make it brighter or a little bit dimmer. So you have a little more control over the olive oil lamp. And you can tell I'm being very careful not to spill any of the oil and set myself on fire. So olive oil lamp so the Romans were using it and I just was curious why that wasn't you know why that tradition was not continued in medieval Europe and I think it's you know this is purely speculation on my part uh, I speak English I'm American if you couldn't tell and, um, yeah, I read English. Uh, 
So, am I going to be biased toward English written sources? Yes. Um, last I checked, there's not very many authors native to uh, the UK, to Britain, to England. And so, that could be the factor. During the medieval time, this is after the fall of the Roman Empire, trade routes were basically crushed. A lot of fragmentation. And, um, you know, olive oil is going to be easier to get in the Mediterranean. Now there is lamps that they used that burnt fish oil and <laughs> that's pretty stinky. The and so naturally I I believe just because of the trade route issues uh, the candles are just became uh, something that's, you know, easier, if, uh, you know, if, I wouldn't say maybe easier. Beeswax is pretty expensive. Beeswax is expensive. So the alternative to beeswax, and I'm delaying, because that smells nice. So the alternative to beeswax is tallow. What is tallow? That is animal fat. And um, I used a, this is originally a spiced, little spice jar. And um, I took some beef tallow uh, from an oxtail. I ate the meat, I cooked it up, and all the, uh, this is animal fat. Beef tallow is kind of it's still pretty expensive. It's, I mean, um, and so uh, I want to make sure I get everything here. Uh, fat in medieval times, protein, especially beef, very expensive, hard to get. Uh, and it's all food. You can eat this. Great in soup. This is, um, you know, this is this is the fat that's been chilled, it's been hardened into, a, you know, tallow, lard. People cook with this. They cook also cook well olive oil. But guess what? Olives, <laughs> uh, you know, the, you know, olives are far away. Far, far, far away. And so, it's either fish oil, or are going to bring fish oil, way of blubber, which they got more into later, tallow. This, I tried to buy a legitimate tallow candle. Tallow, I'm told, smells really bad. Really bad. And, again, this is all food. Food. This is food. This is food. You can cook with it. You can eat with it. You can uh, also oil, olive oil medicine. Okay, they use it for medicine. And they say they a lot of different cultures use different types of oils for medicine. So expensive stuff. So the so we're going to burn this, right? You're going to burn food. So, obviously, whatever fat they had that are going to burn or make into tallow for burning candles was probably the cheapest fat they can get, the stuff that they can't eat. So, this is really high-quality tallow, okay? This is probably on the upper end, okay? So, melt it down, put a wick in, and... Uh, and then I let it set, I let it harden, and uh,
Oops. There it is. There's the tallow candle. I couldn't buy this. I looked on Etsy, and the closest thing I found was a tallow mixture, but it was not pure tallow. It's not pure tallow. And, um, yeah. So you can see... You can see the smoke a little bit. It's a little bit sootier, a lot of bit sootier. No, I was going to make a rush light. I don't have any rush lights. Tallow is really easy to make. Very, you know, I just, it's, it's just the drippings. Um, but again, you can still, that's good food, okay? Um, so what they're going to make uh, actual tallow candles out of um, is going to be the worst of the worst fats, I imagine. And I'm sure there's different qualities of fat. Um, I'm told pork fats is even bad. It's really bad. So this is this is good beef fat. Is it the worst thing in the world? It's not bad. I strained it. Not really good. Um, you know, this was originally for my parsley, out of parsley. Uh, I know they uh, wouldn't have probably have used glass. Glass was expensive. But this is what I had on hand. A tallow candle. Pretty quick. Pretty fast to make, and uh, but you can see the smoke, smoke rising, and um, yeah. So, but curious, mostly curious. So most candles today are made out of paraffin wax. Gross. I don't need that. None of that in here. But, uh, for, unless it's just for, for, for ambience. Ambience thing. So, I've got our three main light sources in the medieval times. And why did they stop using lamps? I think it was a trade issue. Oil in certain in areas or just, you know, olive oil further it tra travels from its source. Obviously, it, get, it gets more expensive um, because, you know, olive oil, the Romans were using it while they're occupied during their expansion. Um, and so they obviously still liked it. They were obviously still well supplied. And uh, so, yeah. Tallow's cheap. And this is the, probably the grade A tallow. This is the best tallow that has ever been. I strained it. It's. not nearly as bad as I feared. Again, pure beef tallow. Um, and probably what they were using was the stuff that they can't eat, but stuff that they can't put in their soup. Um, yes, yeah, definitely not as, as stable a flame. That's the beeswax candle. Now I'm starting to smell it. I'm, I'm smelling the, uh, I'm smelling the tallow now. 
beeswax is pleasant. I like the beeswax. Beeswax came out. They're a little bit more expensive than the paraffin. Paraf you know, toxic paraffin candles. Yeah, I, I thought they're actually using wax, but it's a petroleum product paraffin. Um, you know, there are some downsides of this, uh, of using the oil lamp. One, it's, it's oil. It moves around a lot. You have to be really careful with it. If you spill it, uh, it has to come right to the edge. This is way easier to carry around. Um, a lot more stable. Probably could pack this a lot easier. This one, very easy to make. Very easy to make. Uh, you know, I, uh, it's incredibly easy to make. In fact, you can't buy them. Um, they do emit a bit of a smell. I'm trying, still trying to figure out how to describe it. That's why I got them. Yeah. But you can, if you have a, a bit of some wick and we are fortunate enough to have some meat or some game any of the unusable stuff you can make a nice tallow candle uh, you just have to render the fat down it hardens up to the white stuff on the bottom uh, but as you can tell it gets clear when you heat it up the, as it comes to room temperature, it hardens really good. Just like wax, but it's tallow. Um, so yeah, that's my three medieval light sources. And uh, so yeah, primarily a writer, entertainer, so if I did anything wrong historically, you know, let me know. Um, I think another drawback with this will, will might be cold. I think it could become a lot more jelly. I've actually had uh, issues with my. Uh, it's been in the negatives. And, uh, and, and it's just been cold and sometimes, I'm guessing, I uh, would like to test it that uh, if you are in a cold environment, oil sometimes will get more jelly and maybe harder to distribute into something like this. So this is nice. I would like, I would put, use it. Nice uh, little reading thing. Would not like to move around with this. This is very stationary, in my opinion. Very stationary. Very careful. Yeah. And keep it away from the papers. So yeah, that's that's kind of been my adventure of learning all about candles. Tallow. That's cool. I'm really happy. It came out a lot better than I expected. It is still a bit of a... There's just a bit of a pungent odor. Again, I strained this really well. And it is beef. And, you know, tallow is on the lower end of things. So I imagine there's going to be uh, the lower grade of tallow as well. And just like olive oil, just like tallow, it's basically food. It's a burning food. So uh, 
and especially olive oil, which is very rich in, um, uh, in, in spiritual uh, and healing uh, cultures and, and used both for healing and uh, in religious ceremonies. Uh, olive oil, I think, would not be used as much in certain locations, in colder climates. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, France, uh, you know, go, feel free to look it up, but uh, I've heard France uh, used a mixture, a hodgepodge of uh, oil and candles. Whereas England, um, you know, they had their rush lights. Don't have any rushes, so I can't make rush lights, but they would use the tallow. They would dip the rush lights in the tallow, and it would just be uh, just a, you know, miniature version of, you know, of this. Um, naturally, the beeswax candle burns a lot cleaner, a lot more pleasant, a little bit brighter, I, I feel, and it's just a lot nicer. Um, These, I think I've I've got the best, made some really good tallow because it's it's pungent, but it's not nearly as bad as some people have described it. But some people have better sense of smell than I do. Um, but you can hear that that crackling. You hear that crackling. This is a way, this is nice, cleaner, quieter burn. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, that, if you can, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's a, there's more of a, a pop, crackle. Yeah. Yeah, really cool. I was stuck, was stuck on, on a, uh, like one paragraph on my book, and it was all on candles, and I we really overthought it, but I thought I'd share some of my findings with you. Um, Yeah, so that's, yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, beeswax. It's beautiful. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I way overthought the candles, but I, I'd like to do my research, and i like to share. And if you find this interesting, uh, you know, check out some of my uh, books. Uh, I have audiobooks to sample, and there are, for people that like to read, there are audiobooks on Amazon. And if you like Dragon's Magic Adventure, 
check it out. Chapter 1 Helvisti Nora took in a deep breath as the ship sailed out of the harbor and tugged at her long fur overcoat that blocked the cold wind as she turned for one last look back at the city. She would miss Takroon and its cozy, bone-white, waddle-and-daub buildings with their shaggy thatch roofs. She watched them fade away until all that could be seen was lush green hills dotted with flocks of sheep and smiling shepherds that waved at the...